how do you release the right and the left hand for impact? Do you want an active or do you want a passive release? In Sunday Swings today, and by the way, this is your chance to win a free swing analysis, I'm gonna give you the exact answer. How we release it really controls how we put curvature on the ball, whether that be away from a slice or away from a hook, or actually just get a straightaway ball flight. And also it's how we put speed into our golf swing. Let's have a look at Alex's swing here. This is our second winner on Sunday Swings. And we're gonna agree right now, this is a pretty damn good looking swing. Now, he says he struggles with those hook shots. And I can see here, if we pause it at last parallel, we get a little bit stuck behind us and this club really releases a long way through the golf ball. Very active with the hands. Now, a little bit Rory McIlroy-esque. He, on his older swing, would be very active with his hands through the golf ball. And that's why he hit that big, big draw. Now, Alex says he struggles with that hook shot and that's what's really plaguing his game. So, let's explain this. What is the difference and when would we require the hands to be more active? Active, and when does it become well, hands be a little bit less active? What are the differences and how can we train to find that middle ground? So we're going to explain each and every area of this and I, I, I always want to have a release which is a nice blend of the arms and the body. So I'm probably someone who's more towards the hands being passive than the hands being active. Now bear in mind the hands are always active, it's just a kind of um, relative to where we are. Okay, so if we take Alex's swing to begin with and we have a look at him at last parallel and as he comes into the golf ball at last parallel, the club gets a little bit stuck behind him and this club face gets into a very open position. So if we swing this club through now, where do the strings of this racket point? They point very much to the right of target. So we're going to require a really active release in order to try and find this club face to become square at impact. Now sometimes we will line it up, other times we won't, we'll hit that bit of a hook shot other times on the opposite end of that spectrum we may hit a little bit of that push shot but if we summarize that if we're someone who gets the club a little bit inside and a face a little bit open we're going to really require more of an active release and a more of a roll of these hands through impact and that would be more this way. Now, for a lot of golfers who slice the ball, who work the club over the top, they will find that their release works this way. This way, they get this scooping action on the golf ball. So this is really gonna help you as well. Now, for a slicer, I would definitely recommend going more to the roll because that's the opposite of what you do, and then toning it back to more of a passive release with the hands. So let's explain that. If you're more of a player who has an active release, the club will tend to be a little bit more open to kind of closer to neutral rather than strong, and then the hands will be a lot more active, and potentially the body won't be as active as we want through impact as well. If we're a golfer that has a more of a passive release, now this is what I would definitely get Alex to do because he struggles with that hook shot. I would really want him to train to feel as though at last parallel the club face was a little bit stronger so these strings are more matching our spine angle than straight up and really control this release of the golf club with the arms and the body working together. You can really see there, my wrists aren't really doing a lot of work but where are my strings and my racket pointing? very much towards target. I want you to feel it's an extension up and out of the shot. So if you're someone who wants to have a little bit more of a passive release with these hands, and how will this blend into this? Now, before I would say and go a little bit further on this, whether you're active or passive release will very much depend on one, the club face position, because I'm a big believer in you react to where that club face is, but also how we hold the club. People with a weaker grip will tend to potentially um, want to, well, tend to want to have the club face in a stronger position and be a little bit more passive, more John Ram-esque. People who are more of an active release will tend to have more of a stronger grip and really try and release this golf club. They're the sort of patterns that I see. So let's just clear this up again. If you're a golfer who has a very active release of these hands, we'll tend to have this badminton racket and the strings pointing in this direction and we're really trying to find that golf ball at impact. If we're looking to have a bit more of a passive release at last parallel, we'll have the clubs and the strings a little bit more in a stronger position, and then our arms and our body work as a rot raised rotation and pivot around us to feel as though the hands become a little bit less active. Now, where do I want golfers to be? What is the position I want golfers to be in and how do we train that? For me, this is the position I want us to be in. I want us to be in a blend of them both, if we're perfectly honest. We don't want to always be too active. We could potentially miss the ball left and right. And we don't want to be too passive because we actually want these hands to do a little bit of something. We want some bit of fizz with them. 
but that's just my take on the golf swing. Some people may say some things are a little bit different, but that's how I like to be. So if I'm really training for golfers here, I get them to feel that they're quite passive. So to the top, passive, up, rotate, and move through. So you can see here, as I'm doing this drill, I'm keeping everything moving, I'm keeping everything flowing, but I'm learning to have the club in a much stronger position and less active with the hands, because that would get me out of this stuck position where I've got to try and save the golf ball. It also forces me to rotate and move my body much better, which is why I always want people to be in that position. Things that most golfers don't do, they're not as active in the body as they want to be. So this is a great way for you to learn that. So we swing up, we swing in, real nice right palm on top, up, rotate through. Really feel as though we're passive with these hands. They've not done a lot of work there. If the club face is more open, it's gonna require me to cross the right with the left and try and find this golf ball for impact. And that's what Alex does there. And that is why he struggles with that hook shot. And I'd suggest, he probably struggles with that with the longer clubs as well. If you're watching this going, <laughs> guilty as charged, then yeah, exactly. Okay, so before I want to leave you now, do stick around because what I mentioned earlier was a lot of golfers were in this position, this scoopy position. So I'm just gonna talk to you now, two more minutes of your time to show you how you go from there to what we want to feel. So before we do that though, I'll tell you exactly how you can be one of the winners on Sunday Swings. It's so simple. Number one, all you're gonna do is join this team by hitting that big red subscribe button. That's that one down there. Number two, you've gotta make sure you comment down below, hashtag pick me. And if you are enjoying this video at any point, please do hit that thumbs up button. Okay, so. And the journey I would want to take you on, if you're someone who's very much of a scooper, over the top, and a slicer of the golf ball, the journey I'd want to take you on is very much one of how do we go from a release which works this way, unloading and dumping all this angle away, well it would be one that would be more working this way. Okay, to start with. Get that club face really releasing, because if we're slicing the golf ball, where's our club face not pointing? left. Your club face predominantly points right if you're slicing the golf ball. So we're going to get you into a feeling of, right, okay, can we swing the club behind us? Can we feel that we release it and roll it through? And I will just get you to feel you hit a load of shots, really allowing that right hand to cross the left, feeling as though that club gathers behind us and allow the right to cross the left. Once we've mastered that, we can then go on our journey of toning down those hands because I would hope that if I get you slice, if you're a slice of the golf ball, we start to create a little bit of the opposite. We start to see the ball work excessively the opposite because for a slicer, that is like, wow, that is what we want to see. That is the place you want to be. So once you've started to achieve that, we can then work on trying to tone that action down, start working that golf club to be in a stronger position throughout and more rotation in the release rather than the hands in the release. Because long-term, that's gonna help us control the golf club, whether it's a seven iron, a pitching wedge, a driver, or hitting a little chip. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that was a, a nice explanation for you and simple explanation for you of where do you want the active, where do you want them to be passive and how do we get a good blend of them both.